In this video, we're going to drive the distribution of the difference between two binomials in two different ways and show that they're, uh, the results are equivalent. Here we're going to let uh, one sample be binomial with parameters N1 and P1, and there's the density of it. Q is 1 minus P. Second sample is from a binomial N2 minus P2, that's the density. Um, here we set up our transformation. We go from x1, x2, you know, into y and z. Where y is ultimately the dis density that we want, and, and it's the difference of these two uh, binomials. Um, when this, when we're in this case, uh, the Jacobian of the transformation is one, but we there's some restrictions on the values that that our uh, observations can take. If we let y free range from n minus n2 to n1, then z is restricted from uh, 0, you know, the maximum of 0 to minus 1 and, and uh, the minimum of this. And what that means is, is this. So here in this setting, this is a rectangle because this goes from 0 to n1 and this one goes from 0 to n2. They're independent, so it's an exact uh, rectangle. But in this mapping, uh, y1 and z1, it ends up looking like this. It's a parallelogram. And so there, um, are, there are regions that we have to be careful when we sum. So for any given value of y, so that's what this says, y can be unrestricted then um, the z value is limited to what it can equal. Okay. Well, the normal approach here is we find the joint density, which is the product of these two, where this, this is the original x1 density with, with uh, y plus z plugged in, and then this is x2 with z plugged in, and um, then we integrate out z. And remember that z went from, from this to that, the maximum of those two to the minimum of these. And this is the density. Okay? Uh, in a, you know, doing this by hand is probably not fun, but in a computer, once it's in, then it's a push of a button. It's very quick to do. So that's one derivation. I'm going to show you another one that I think is pretty slick and I use it often in the continuous case too, where we want this density, uh, that y is the difference of the two binomials, x1 minus x2, that's y. So what I do is I add in x2 but then sum it over all possible values so it doesn't change this density. Well, this is the uh, a, a joint density, and, and f really means, you know, probability. So f of y, x2, i, is really the probability that our random variable y equals y. And then here is x2 equals. So I'm changing it into probabilities. And then when you have a joint distribution you can you can manipulate into a conditional times a, uh, a marginal so just standard manipulation here well this um, from here to here I let y be x1 minus x2 so nothing changes from here to here but we're saying that x2 equals i so once you set x2 equal to i, then you can take away that conditional. So it's the probability that x1 minus i equal to y times the probability x2 is i. Well, that can be taken to the other side. So x1 equals this. We're still summing all over these values. Um, now what's interesting here, and so we know the density of x1 and x2, so these are simple to, to plug in. Um, but one, one note here is that if we go from 0 to n2, some of these won't make sense, meaning this value here can be negative, 
which means this probability is zero. It could be greater than n1, which means this probability is zero. So where from uh, i equals zero to n2 is this non-zero? Well, it ends up being that i goes from the maximum of zero to y minus, uh, minus y to the minimum of n2, n1 minus y. Well, now let's plug in the in, into our densities. And this is exactly the same as what we derived before. So the same result derived in two different ways. Now I'm going to quickly illustrate this in R. Okay, we're in R here. I'm on a Ubuntu Linux base machine. And we're going to look at the distribution of the difference between two binomial parameters. Uh, here we're going to let y equal x1 minus x2 where the x1 and x2 are binomials. Now this is the uh, a function to create that distribution or the density that we just derived. So for here are the parameters n1, n2, p1, p2 and this is for a given y we want to sum from the you know the, the maximum of these two, the minimum of this and and it, you know, it comes out as as I call it temp because it's not uh, we're saving it. So let's let's run this uh, density. And now let's look at some specific examples. We're going to look at several. Here we're going to let a uh, uh, sample size of 10 and 15. The the proportion P1 and P2 is 0.9 and 0.4. And then we're going to plot it. And there here's the density of y of x1 minus x2 and let's check to see it sums to 1 and it does so if you take the height of each of these bars they add to 1 and and now let's just have a little fun here so let's make this 20 and 0.4 and this uh, and we'll keep it 15 and 0.3 so then we plot this and, and that is it and it, they all sum to one and we can do this for any sample size so let's say this is 100 and this is uh, 150 so there's the density now all the bars are right on top of each other they do sum to one but notice here that it sort of looks like a normal distribution Okay. That's going to come into play when we calculate uh, power and sample size in another video. So let's do 0.1 and 0.9. So it goes down and let's, and let's change these 0.9 Point one, and let's see how that affects the density. So it shifts it. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for today. So I will talk to you later.